My name is Fawn Waterfield. I'm a visual artist and I have a show right now uh, exhibited at the Juno Arts and Humanities Council. Uh, my show is called Lightworks. It's digital photography. I have been living in Juno again since 2019 and uh, I lived in Juno a number of years ago. I've been making art since I was a little girl. I used to uh, do that instead of my other schoolwork, like math. Lightworks is a show of digital photography, and it's uh, actually what's called new media. New media is a form of art which uses anything that has to do with the technological or digital production of artworks in order to create your artworks. Uh, digital photography is one of the main forms, I would, I guess you could call it, of new media. In my work, what I'm doing is I'm taking images, multiple images, and using them as symbols, and then using free apps on my smartphone and on my uh, digital apparatus and layering these different exposures. So, for example, one of my pieces, um, What Water Will, Oh Baby, is a layering of probably four different uh, photographs in order to get the whole piece. I think if you look at it, you can see there's, there's a whole element of realism in my work, but because it's layered and it's just posed and I've pushed the saturation on each image, it uh, has this kind of a mystical or um, magical reality feeling to it, which I, I like to promote. I'm, I'm working with my, my concepts, my ideas are what is it that we do to create meaning in our life? How, how does consciousness happen? And I think that uh, we use symbols in order to make that happen. That's, that's what I'm after. So my artwork is this layering of different symbols in a, a metonomic type of a way so that I'm making sort of a visual poetry with uh, my ideas. So for example, um, I have a, a mini series in Lightworks that's called What Water Will. And it comes from the idea of what if we were just a water's excuse for walking around on, on dry land? What, what would that look like? And that idea came to me because I know that we are mostly water. And I've studied uh, Dr. Emoto's work on water and the influence of word on water to change the actual molecular structure of water. So I have a number of images in the show that are about what that would look like if, if it was true that we're, we're actually the result of water wanting to walk around on dry land. So one of the things that I have been thinking about in my show, one of the things that's on my mind a lot about is about time. And these three pieces are all sort of another mini series that has to do with time. This was the first one. This is called Beauty and the Beast. And uh, I have lost a lot of people in my life. A lot of people have passed on. And I've also lost a lot of people just sort of to attrition, to movement, where they live on the planet and um, how their lives change. And they go through different processes. And, um, we can, I can't see them as often I would, as I would like to and maintain that really close connection with them. So the other thing that's evident as I'm 62 years old is that time marches on and it has its way with you and you really can't do anything about it except for just be as aware as possible in your life and uh, use your time wisely. So this one, of course, is called Beauty and the Beast. The first one, it's about beauty and how ephemeral it actually is. Everything that exists in the field of time will eventually not be in that form anymore. Beauty fades, beauty decays, and beauty passes on to something, some other form of energy. This is uh, Beauty and the Beast 2, and this is like clockwork and these are images, very vague images of people doing things. 
And this uh, reminds me of the wheel of time, how um, it just marches on, just doesn't wait for you and it just marches on. And you might as well just make friends with it because that's what you got to work with. Another thing that um, time reminds me of is corridors. I feel like in a lot of ways, our memories are like a long hallway with very interesting um, rooms that go off of it. And you can actually go back and visit it and, and uh, spend time in these memories. Again, here's those vague people. Would you like some situation that you had or this person had lived in their past at some point or maybe is going towards seeing them? So I have many versions of these corridors. This is just the one that made it into the show. This piece is called Merlin's Clock, and it's another one of the Time mini series within my show. And um, I think it's pretty indicative. It kind of speaks for it's itself. This one has probably 24 different layers, something like that, 12, 12 to 24 different layers. I picked up the ephemera from uh, several sources online. So it's layered and layered and layered. But Stonehenge was our early clock. So I think it fits in with the time. This show was supposed to happen in September 2019, but because of the pandemic, it was bumped to this year. During that time, the whole uh, editing of digital photography has changed. It's grown just huge. It's amazing what has happened. The, the camera, for example, that I had two years ago was only able to capture images at 12 megapixels. I think it went up to 24 and that was max. My camera I have now goes up to 106 megapixels and one of its cameras that's in my smartphone. So that's amazing. That just happened in this past year. The other thing that is really amazing that's happened is the ability to edit. We now have the ability to edit digital images, which you couldn't get larger than maybe uh, 12 megapixels. The fidelity of the images has changed. So we can get really, really clear images that are blown up huge, just gigantic. So I can take something that would be only a couple of... Uh, kilobytes of, of uh, images, and I can now take that and blow it up to the size of a wall, and the fidelity is there, the enlargement's there. It's, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so what's happened is there's now this uh, enlargement of the field. I'm using AI as uh, one of my tools in my studio. It's, it's, it's very much like having a really cool brush or having a, a printmaking machine in your house, in your studio, or it's, it's, it's monumental, the difference in being able to do this. So I'm really happy that in, in, in that sense, I'm very happy that I, I had to wait for the show. It, it would have been a different show. There are several images of my husband in the show. He is, uh, definitely amuses me. I did a show in Fairbanks for my thesis show uh, 30 some years ago. And he was in that show and he symbolized the Maj. And to me, that means it's somebody who has figured out the right way to live there. Remember my, my great draw is consciousness. How do we create meaning in life? So he has often been that symbol for the man that is trying to figure out how to do that, how to be a good man. What does it mean to be a successful human being on this planet? So we spend a lot of time hiking together, uh, especially as one of our favorite things to do is to hike around in the rainforest. And these two images are him. I think of the rainforest as uh, a church. It's very much like a sanctuary, and that's why this one is named Sanctuary. And this is a Buddha in the background here that comes from a park that has over a thousand Buddha sculptures in it. This particular one actually had a scarf around his neck. So I often think of the walking in the rainforest as going to church. There, it's, it's very similar to the, the sort of light that comes 
through a cathedral or a space that is set up for contemplation. So I love this one because he, here's the yeah, he's walking through the forest there. He's in the sanctuary. This is another one of CA in the forest, and this is our dog, Duke. This one's called Duke, and Duke passed just a couple of months ago. But again, you can see that light, that the cathedral-like light. And Duke is very much a sacrament of sacred space. This is another image of CA. Uh, and I think it's really interesting because you can see the, the treatment and the, the process on this one. You can obviously see that there's a landscape's images behind him. There's like water coming through here. There's water up in here. Here's another one of CA. What this is called Green Man. And I think it speaks for itself. I have been having a lot of fun doing this show. It was a learning experience. There was tons of moments where I was at my wits end and had to talk myself off the ledge, so to speak. Uh, I had a lot of help. My son especially helped me with the technological aspects of things and held my hand during many periods. I, 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 couldn't, have, I couldn't have produced this show without my son, Camden Bizard and his expertise with technology. I also want to really thank David Riccio for his help uh, understanding the whole process of printing a show. This is my first show where the work is primarily digital photographs instead of paintings or sculpture or hand pulled prints. So that's a whole different world, a completely different world. And David Riccio was wonderful in helping me uh, navigate that whole process. If you want to see more of my work, I do have a, a website that is a, a little bit clunky still because it's definitely not my expertise, but you can see some of my work there. You can buy prints there or their, their poster quality, and that's at fawnwaterfield.com. If you would like to have uh, hand-signed limited edition prints, you can look me up at fawnwaterfieldlightworks at gmail.com and I get a hold of me there and I will have those prints printed here in town in Juneau and uh, get them signed and get them to you. So I hope you enjoy my show. I hope you get a chance to look at my work and uh, I hope you uh, get to fiddle around with some new media, with free media with your smartphones. Might as well. It's right there. It's for you.